Hello, my name is Chris and I will look at the 2022 Mazda CX-30. I will give you a quick one minute overview, then I'll take it out on the road and tell you where it stands among its competitors. There are three trims and three engines available. All wheel drive is standard, as is a six speed automatic transmission. The base GX has a two liter engine with 155 horsepower and 150 pounds of torque. The mid trim GS has a 2.5 liter engine with 186 horsepower and torque. This model, by the way, seems to be the best value with 18 inch wheels, dual zone AC, heated mirrors, and a heated leather wrapped steering wheel. The GT, which we have, comes with the optional 2.5 liter turbo engine and this tester tops out at $45,719 in Quebec. In Alberta, it's $41,765. The fuel economy is 10.5 liters in the city and 7.9 liters on the highway. The non-turbo version is available for the GT also. Here it is on the road. Hello car lovers driving the 2022 Mazda CX-30. Uh, GT Turbo, the all-equipped version. This one with destination, almost $40,000 Canadian. That's quite expensive for a subcompact crossover. But what to say about this vehicle? In the past, I've reviewed this vehicle. I said it was the best in the category. There are, but the competition is crazy, crazy. And I, when I tried Volkswagen Taos, I felt on the lease, at least for what I think people want from this type of vehicle, I put it at number one. So it's nice to try this vehicle again to see if I still feel this way about the, the vehicle. I'm gonna start with the exterior styling, this paint, this like chalky paint, chalky silver paint is just amazing. It's just amazing. This, this vehicle, I don't know, I, I find the proportions make it probably one of the most desirable uh, hatchbacky appearance crossover type designs that, that that I've seen on the market, it's, it's really the best. I find where this exterior design uh, is, is perhaps beautiful on the outside but restrictive on the inside is in terms of the outward visibility. Very small windows here. Uh, the forward visibility is very good, but the side visibility, this ain't a Subaru, all right, or this ain't a Honda. Where Mazda uh, scores strongly is just in terms of the charm, the luxury, and um, uh, really creative, interior design uh, there's a, a mixture of charcoal gray and and this like like bronzy brown uh, it works so well together these seats are very good in fact if you'll recall those cx5 seats that i tried i, I hated them i have plenty of room here i'm not feeling at all claustrophobic it is it is wrapped around but roomy it's kind of contradictory but that's the way it is however in the back it's not roomy at all I sit behind myself and that's it and I wouldn't want to be there for more than an hour. So probably that's the vehicle's biggest weakness. Uh, rear seat room is, is very limited. Rear trunk room is average. Uh, you do get the small sunroof. Uh, you do get a, a, a wonderful Bose sound system with a, with a center point uh, speaker. It, it really plays well for the radio, talk radio, and it plays music quite loudly. I was listening on uh, satellite radio BPM, which is a uh, dance music. Uh, the bass is very heavy and the sound system was delivering. I mean, it, it meets my needs, all right? And, and my needs are quite significant in terms of sound. Um, the, 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 the dashboard, classic layout, but if you want, you can look at the heads up display. Very useful, especially in Montreal where we have, uh, Lachine, Montreal, where we have these ridiculous 30 kilometer an hour speed limits. They used to be 40, they put them down to 30 because on the pretext it was for pedestrians, but it's really about, uh, it's really anti-car stuff. Well, it's good, you have the heads-up display, you can always see your speed. But I, I, even if you don't have the heads-up display on a lower trim, you have a wonderful dash. So on that level, it's good. The infotainment, well, that's never been a Mazda strong suit. They're trying to do like an iDrive interface. And I must say that the response, I don't know if they've recently changed it or something, but the response is very snappy, all right? So on that level, no problem. However, it's for sure it's not a touch screen. It doesn't have this physical interface. It's just nothing's going to beat like a touch screen, two knobs and some buttons to get back when you're out of trouble. Um, though I am told by Mazda owners, you do get used to this interface. I don't know. I just don't like complicated stuff. It's just, it's just not my bag. I think a hybrid version is sorely lacking. I don't know as a car manufacturer in Canada, 
how you're, unless you're living in Alberta where they have a sensible government which lowered the taxes, um, I, I just don't know how you're going to make it without at least a hybrid system with this type of vehicle. I mean, it's, uh, if you have like a regular routine where you have, where you're doing 50, 60 kilometers an hour a day and you have a bit of traffic, uh, I mean, you're, you're looking at 80 to a hundred dollars of gas a week. If you have like kids and you're one or two kids or you're running errands or you just want to go see people, right? I mean, that's the reason why we buy a car is to get into the car and be able to, and to be able to go see people. And it's becoming increasingly difficult with these uh, four-cylinder turbo engines that whether we like it or not are axed a little bit on performance. And that's okay if that's what you want. It's just, it's just going to cost you. What are my final thoughts on, on this vehicle? Uh, on a personal note, if this vehicle came in a hybrid that did about 5, 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers, I, I think I would buy it instantaneously. I would trade in my Acura and buy this vehicle because it's just, it has so much charm. It drives, it drives like a car, except you're, you're kind of like seated up high. You've kind of, you have a bit of a crossover experience in, in a really interesting car-like driving experience. The steering wheel is, the software is really good. Uh, it feels it feels substantial. Uh, the, the suspension is, is perfectly calibrated, and uh, it, it's it's the goods. Uh, in this interior this interior is so good you're willing to forgive its flaws, right? You you just oh whatever, all right. And and that's always the sign of charm, right? Charming people get you that way, uh, the, in spite of their flaws. And Mazda as a as as a car brand, especially in the CX30. Um, they charm you at nice thick steering wheel, nice grips, uh, wonderful seats, great sound system, beautiful styling. Um, just this, just these these metallic buttons here on the steering wheel, so high level. You you you, you expect that on an all equipped three series, and 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 it really makes you feel special, and you feel your money, and that's what you want. And uh, those are my thoughts on the Mazda CX-30 2022. Still my first choice personally, but I think on an objective scale, I think I'd have to put the Taos maybe slightly ahead of it just because of its hyper convenience, of its, of its, of its competency. And uh, yeah, I think, those are the, I think these are the top two vehicles in the category. Uh, I have to try the new HRV. I haven't tried it yet. And those are my thoughts. By the way, if you like this video, like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. And if you really like it, well then of course you should subscribe. And that is it.